is Danny and welcome to this update video this morning. I hope you're doing wonderful and we'll be taking a look at current weather conditions across the Caribbean and what is expected today in terms of rainfall, uh, the wind forecast, but we'll also be talking about the hurricane season. So new predictions are out. There are a couple new predictions, all very active predictions calling for more than 20 named storms and uh, it is definitely something concerning. I mean, the season on the whole is concerning because of the setup, although it does not guarantee where we'll be impacted. So let's talk about it. Looking at the satellite imagery this morning, lots of severe weather across parts of the U.S. We can see all those white dots indicating lightning strikes. So there's been that hail damage, a lot of heavy rain resulting in some flooding across some areas. And even those damaging winds, uh, that could even be hurricane force out there. And along with that, there could be tornadoes stronger than EF2. So that's the danger along the Gulf Coast today uh, with all this severe weather development. And as we look elsewhere, though, nothing much is really happening. Some thunderstorms here and there in the eastern Pacific uh, near the southern central american territories costa rica panama much not really happening for northern south america this morning bit of convection over french Guiana, caribbean on a whole a few passing showers at most right now nothing crazy going on and the main development region is pretty much quiet as well and then as we zoom into the caribbean we can see these cloud clusters moving by and uh, there is still some dust around some saharan dust is still around but we're not talking about a dense plume of dust, just a little dust in the region. Now let's head on to that rainfall forecast from Euro and here we can see it. So the more colorful this map becomes, more rainfall activity is expected. So we're seeing some of these green and these yellow shadings popping up in parts of the northeastern Caribbean. So for islands such as Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Barthelme, Seba, St. Eustatius, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, you guys may experience some additional showers as we head through today. That chance decreases Guadeloupe southward through Grenada, uh, including Barbados, and especially for Trinidad and Tobago, and even the ABC Islands. Much rain is not expected as we head through today. Parts of Colombia, especially near the Pacific coast, may be a little bit active, and most of Venezuela should be quiet. Again, as they'll experience some substantial rain in some areas, especially Suriname and French Guiana. Uh, parts of Guyana may remain pretty hot and dry today. As we head over to Central America, the Southern Central American territories, Costa Rica, Panama, uh, parts of Nicaragua, will likely be active, especially as we head into later today. But uh, things should be a little bit on the drier side for Honduras, parts of El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize. Mexico and even the offshore islands, San Andreas, Providencia, the Bay Islands of Honduras, and the Keys as well, offshore Belize. It's likely that uh, it will be a bit on the drier side as we head through today. Not only dry, but the winds are going to be kicking up. We'll move to that in a moment. And then as we head towards Cuba, the Florida Peninsula, much of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, uh, most of Hispaniola as well. Much is not expected in terms of any rainfall activity today. The chance is pretty low. But for parts of the Cayman Islands, sections of Jamaica, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, there may be some shower activity today. And there was some uh, rainfall in parts of Jamaica yesterday. However, that wasn't the case for the entirety of the island. So there are still many more areas in need of some rainfall relief. And not just rain, but some substantial rainfall activity. Eventually, that should happen as the rainy season kicks in next month, though. Wind forecast. So as I said, it is going to be quite windy. The Gulf, very, very windy. Some of those tropical storm force wind gusts and in the northwest and central Caribbean as well. So as we head through today, we see those all those blue shadings in the region. So ABC Islands uh, and heading towards the coast of Central America, the Bay Islands offshore, the Yucatan, very windy as we head throughout today. So again, those tropical storm force wind gusts are definitely possible, but elsewhere across the Caribbean, including the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, winds could be up to 20, 25 knots with those gusts up to uh, 30, 40 miles per hour today. Now, uh, I spoke about that surge in moisture which models have been showing i spoke about that yesterday 
and the trend continues into today so this is a look at what euro is showing the green shadings indicate the moisture look at that cluster right there within the vicinity of the eastern caribbean so that would be somewhat of an increase in rainfall as we are going to be heading into next week going to around the mid to latter part of next week that's what euro is showing looking at the gfs model now uh, gfs is also showing that increase in rainfall activity over in the eastern caribbean icon model remains consistent as well as we head into next week, go into the early to middle part of the week, there we see that increase in moisture and some of those darker shadings of green indicating more rainfall. So yeah, we've got our models being pretty consistent about that. And as I said, I hope it comes to fruition because it would really help out with those areas experiencing droughts. Now, hurricane season talk. We are less than two months away from the official start of hurricane season, which is the 1st of June. And so the predictions are rolling in. Earlier this year, I mentioned that we're going to start seeing more as we head into April. And that's what's happening. Uh, that's the kind of annual thing. So we've had three new predictions, all calling for more than 20 named storms. So here they are. We've got one from the Tropical Storm Risk. Well, really an updated prediction because they made their first in December and we also have predictions from Colorado State University and the University of Arizona. So the tropical storm risk in their most recent prediction is expecting 23 named storms, of which 11 could become hurricanes and five major hurricanes. In case you're not very sure of what uh, classifies as a major hurricane, it's basically a category three, four or five. Next, we have the Colorado State University predicting the same thing. 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes. UA, very close to those numbers. 21 named storms, 11 hurricanes, 5 major hurricanes. So we can see the sort of trend that's been going on with these predictions here. And I'll go over it again. The reason they're expecting this is because of the setup ahead. We've had above average sea surface temperatures across the North Atlantic. And just as comparison, last year this time was not so warm across the Atlantic. Previous years, including 2005, 2020, were not this warm at this time of year across the North Atlantic. So this year uh, surpasses all other years, at least the last uh, 40 plus years or so in terms of how warm uh, the Atlantic is. That is clearly seen on this anomaly map. So the orange shadings indicate above average temperatures, the whites indicate normal temperatures, and the blues indicate below normal temperatures. So we can clearly see uh, the main development region, the Caribbean, and even some spots in the Gulf warmer than average. And uh, as we look at a global view here, we can see those blue shadings popping up in the uh, equatorial Pacific. Now, this is our Enso region, El Nino Southern Oscillation. This is where temperatures fluctuate and they impact the weather globally. Now, the cool phase of the Enso is called La Nina, which favors more tropical development in the Atlantic because it allows for a more conducive environment. It lessens the uh, upper level winds, which usually help to rip those storms apart. And that is exactly what we're heading to. And we can see that uh, the hints of La Nina wanted to make her presence known very soon. So we're still in El Nino, but La Nina is well on its way and it should set in as we head into the next couple of months. And uh, the most active period of the hurricane season is uh, usually late August through mid-October. And that could be very, very, very active this year. So does that mean they're going to be impacted? You could be, who knows? But there is no telling. There could be 20 named storms, but there's no saying where it's going to be impacted. However, uh, looking at historical data, looking at what happened in previous La Nina seasons, if we notice, more storms actually tend to trend toward the west compared to El Nino seasons, such as last year. That is because a La Nina typically favors a stronger Bermuda high, an area of high pressure. And when it is dominant, it tends to steer more systems toward the west, putting the Caribbean and even the U.S. at a greater risk of impacts. So it does not say where exactly it's going to get hit. But if you're along the east coast of the U.S., 
the Gulf Coast, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, the Caribbean Islands, and even towards Central America. It is good to be prepared ahead of the hurricane season because I really don't think this is going to be a quiet year and I definitely think we're going to be seeing some nasty storms. And even if there aren't a whole lot of hurricanes or major hurricanes, it only takes one, just one to be the talk of the season, the talk of the town, if you will. So yeah, and in terms of naming, this is the list of names for the hurricane season. So every list comprises 21 names. But in the case where we actually have, say, 23 name storms, as what TSR and CSU are expecting, then we would go over to the supplemental list. The National Hurricane Center would use the, uh, the supplemental list, which came into being in 2021, to name tropical cyclones. So that is in the case where the list for the season, the designated list of 21 names is exhausted. And I think that's certainly a possibility for this year. However, guys, uh, uh, there could be changes. Of course, we know it's the weather we're talking about. But I don't think that we're going to be seeing any significant change out there. Like something drastic has to happen that would uh, greatly influence the hurricane season to what we have not been expecting. So, yeah, active season is ahead, although it does not say where we'll be impacted. So it is good for everyone in that risk zone to take the necessary precautions. But I'll keep you posted as per usual. And that is it for this update. I really hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions... Feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.